So my dad, I distinctly remember him standing here when they were digging this, and it's beautiful black dirt, you know. And my dad said, am I a fool to be pouring concrete over this farm ground? Big picture, uh, if we want to talk about responsible agriculture, modern agriculture, using the technology that we have, thinking outside the box, I still find it incredible what's able to be done with the expertise of all these people around us to do what we're doing. So this is the truck unload manifold. Trucks pull in, there's two bays. We get, Mason just told me he got nine trucks today and I see that our tanks are pretty full. So what happens is come in, hook the hose up. This is all through the PLC. You select what tank it's gonna go through. It automatically opens the right valves in the sequence. You hit start, the pump turns on. There's a flow meter here. When the flow meter stops registering, the pump automatically shuts off, closes the valves, and the trucks can unhook and go away. So the products that are coming in are largely manufacturing food waste. Right now, the economy is that they pay us to take it. Where are the products going from the trucks is to one of these three tanks. The first tank is a steel 20,000 gallon tank. That's our manure tank. So primarily uh, hog manure, sometimes dairy manure goes in there. Then these two stainless steel tanks, they're 50,000 gallons. We call the middle tank the substrate tank and this one the fog tank. Fog stands for fats, oils, and greases. So fats, oils, and greases are more high energy uh, per gallon fed. So the others are more kind of like stabilizers. So you think of your, you know, your steak and, and your chocolate versus your salad and your potatoes, right? We always call the manure the Pepto-Bismol. <laughs> like, it's kind of trying to keep things equal. I, all it really is is a big stomach. So are no different than us. You want to have, have a steady diet of consistent products with minimal variability. And occasionally you do get upset. And so we use our manures to, to kind of stabilize that so you don't get upset. Trucks unload into there then four times a day. We do our dosing. So we like to say that the, the trucks are the kitchen, the tanks are the platters and then you take your serving spoon into your plate, which is the blend pit. So four times a day, we're, we're taking our, our servings out of the platters into the plate, the blend pit, and the concoction, the blend out of them is to try to create that consistent diet. We measure that in VFAs, volatile fatty acids, and COD, which is chemical oxygen demand. We know the inherent traits of each load that's coming in, and we create our diet from there. So that's the blend pit, what I call the plate. It's just the staging area. Then every 30 minutes, there's a pump over here in a dry well. Every 30 minutes, we're feeding the digester. So 48 times a day, we're taking that spoon from the plate to the mouth and, and we're feeding the digester. So this is an often overlooked and underappreciated component of what we're doing here, but I really find it interesting. So all of this pipe work right here we're taking the heat from the two engines. If you think of coolant in your engine and a radiator, that heat's just going to the atmosphere. Well, we have heat exchangers that the coolant in the engine is going through. And then this is a glycol loop that's capturing that heat. And we're bringing that here to this manifold and we're distributing that hot water to the digester, which 24 seven, it has to be maintained at 101 degrees Fahrenheit to maintain microbial activity. We preheat the storage tanks PEX in floor heat for this whole facility. Our sinks, our shower, wash down hose, all that hot water is reclaimed heat from the engine. It kind of goes back to the name of wasting no energy, not letting anything go to waste. And we really are only using like 30% of the heat that those engines generate, even in our max draw. So the coldest day of winter, we're only using 30% of the heat they're generating. So one of our visions, you ask like, okay, so what's next? is some sort of co-location, something that could use heat, uh, that uses the electricity, something like that where the synergies just tie together on, on one property. So. so if we look at the tank itself, 98 feet in diameter, 24 foot tall sidewalls, and then on top, we call those membranes. So the outer one is just a weather membrane, Inside, there's an identical membrane that we call the gas membrane, and that will expand and contract as we are producing gas. So it's pre providing a buffer. Uh, it's impossible to match exactly the engine's consumption to our gas production. 
So kind of like your fuel gauge. Like if our fuel gauge is really full, uh, we run her at max load. If she starts to teeter down, we lower the load, which reduces our consumption. And then there's all kinds of safety interlocks built in for overpressure, underpressure, and all of that. But this is the, the main gas line coming out. The first thing that happens is it sees that T filter. There's natural condensation that occurs in different environmental conditions. We try to keep a really steady environment in the tank of that 101 degrees. So if you think of the winter time when it's really cool, it doesn't matter how well that's insulated, that gas is going to cool. That creates condensation. It drops in the bottom of that T-filter. That's one of the very few manual operations around here. We have to drain that. The T-filter also serves as like a barrier. As this is a biological process, there are imperfections and there are foaming events. So foaming events are like similar to the human body having diarrhea. It'll expand and it could get into the gas line. So that T-filter stops any liquid or foam home from getting to our gas conditioning equipment. So that's, that's a major component for us. So after the T-filter is this white skid, uh, we call that the H2S skid. What's in there is carbon impregnated wood chips. In our gas, we have varying degrees of H2S, which is hydrogen sulfide. Hydrogen sulfide is extremely corrosive to metal components. So hydrogen sulfide cleans to those carbon impregnated wood chips and cleans that up. And so after that, it goes to the gas skid. And what that is, it's just a huge chiller unit. So we're, by the time the gas gets there, in average temperatures, it's 85 degrees. We rapidly chill it to 34, which creates uh, rapid condensation. So we're removing the water from the gas at that point. The water goes into this wet well, we pump it back to the blend pit and it just, that'll end up back in the tank. So then after it's chilled, it goes to the, what we call the compressor, which is just a, a roots air blower. It's compressing the gas as well as heating it back up to about 90 degrees, which is optimum for combustion. So 90 degrees and 3.3 PSI. And then through our valve selections, it's going to either or, or both engines. And then if we're making more gas than we can consume, we also have a flare. But with these two engines, we rarely run the flare outside of a power outage where we're not able to run them and create electricity. Both of these engines are made to run off of biogas. Full rated speed of these is 1800 RPM. There's 20 cylinders, it's a V block, so 10 on each side. Each cylinder has its own coil, each cylinder has its own spark plug. There's a massive turbocharger on each of them. They run off of methane, CH4, it's a combustible gas, and that's ultimately what we are creating in the digester is CH4. It's not, it's not pipeline quality gas, so it's not like RNG or LNG, but we're in the high 60s percent methane, which is pretty good for a biogas plant. Let's get this thing fired up. As I mentioned, this is kind of the tail end of the tour. So this is um, the, we call it the lagoon. Technically it's the affluent storage tank, but lagoon is a lot easier. So all the product that goes through once it's digested, um, effluent, so that's what's coming out, is stored in here. Seven and a half million gallon tank over 3.3 acres. And we empty it twice a year, once in the spring, once in the fall. It's a vast space. <laughs> so my dad, I distinctly remember him standing here when they were digging this and it's beautiful black dirt, you know. And my dad said, am I a fool to be pouring concrete over this farm ground? And it was just a big risk at the time, huge risk. Lots of unknowns, but definitely uh, it, it's worked out well overall. Yeah, it's, that's a pretty big tank. <laughs> we empty this tank twice a year because of capacity. We're processing 15 million gallons a year and the tank holds seven and a half million gallons. In the spring, we do it all by drag line. Instead of loading tankers and hauling it, uh, it's just pumped through a hose system. We have two and a half mile of hose. So we can reach 2,200 acres with that. That's our preference in the spring. Uh, it's much less invasive. There's not big heavy tanks driving across the ground and we can do it a lot faster. We'll pump a million gallons in a day and we can empty this pretty quickly to get planting done. And then in the fall, as soon as our first beans come off, we're following beans and then we're tanking it so it all goes into these tankers that you see around the facility 
and the semis haul it to the, the farms that are outside that radius that we can reach with the drag line system. Because of the heat, it's actually still digesting in here. Obviously, uh, we do the best we can to get all the gas off in the tank because that's how we make our money, but there's still just some inert pieces that are left. Because of that gasification, we're kind of lifting any solids that are in there and that's on the surface, but it's a really thin layer. So what, we're, what we really want to do uh, we have a boat that we control with a remote. A crane will come in and lift the boat and drop it in there. A day or two before we're going to apply, we run that boat and we're mixing this. And our, our ultimate goal is we want it to be as homogenous as possible. So the first gallon pumped should have the same nutrient content as the last gallon pumped. And that's a key part to us managing this as a fertilizer and not just a waste. It's not a random application, it's very calculated. And so by having this homogenous, the next piece is controlling our rate, and then we're verifying the nutrient content by daily samples uh, from the applicator. We're targeting removal rates with this, so we're not trying to variable rate. It is homogenous, so your N, P, K, and S ratios are fixed. Um, obviously, it's hard to match exactly what's needed, but by selecting our products carefully, uh, we can get the ratios how we want it, and then from there, it's just choosing our rate. And we're just trying to replace what a corn soybean rotation would be removing. And then any other deficiencies that may be out there, um, the variability that's from acre to acre, we're supplementing with commercial fertilizer. I would like to think that we are doing a good thing holistically here, and it definitely doesn't come without its downsides. I mean, some of the first comments when people pull up and it's no different for you guys, is, man, it stinks. And it does. That's part of the imperfection of this facility. We do everything we can to try to keep it clean. I mean, you guys understand what we're taking in and hauling out, and I, I hope that there's an appreciation for the way this looks, for, for what the facility is. My perspective is, you know, there's downsides to anything. If we want to look at coal, it's pollution. If we want to look at solar panels, no one wants to look at them. Same thing with wind turbines. Digesters creating electricity comes with stink. Like, there's an offset, and that's just part of the human existence. You have to take the good with the bad. I would like to say that we've done everything that we can to try to be good neighbors. It's certainly not been problem free uh, and we understand that and we're sympathetic towards that and we want to do everything we can to maintain that relationship but also maintain the perspective of what is actually going on here holistically from start to finish and um, and we really believe in that still to this day.